Hey, it's Pastor Rick. Glad you're back with me today. I want to talk about definitions again this week. And I want you to think about one main verse, John chapter four. This is part of the series I did. You can go get the app, Overcoming by Faith Ministries app. You can download it and you can click on sermons and you can watch. Uh, there's all the series are listed there and you can catch up on anything you missed. And this is one of the sermons I did on definitions. The whole thing is there so you can listen to it. this is part three. And you, this is about worship. Now, here's my here's my my argument in this series. If you have the right definitions, you'll have the right results. If you have the wrong definitions, you're going to have the wrong results. And so you have to make sure that you come up with the right definitions. Now, a lot of people are sincere, especially religious people. They feel like they read one verse and so they got all the definitions right in that one verse. Jesus was very clear about worship. Here's what he said. This is John chapter four, verse 23. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is a spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So please note, this is a foundational principle that helps us define what worship is. Now, in our culture, worship for a lot of people is going to church. Worship for some people is singing in the choir. Worship for some people is being a good person. So it's defined different ways. And it has this incredible tendency to affect how we view God and people. So if people don't worship with us the way we worship and they don't cry or they don't sing or they don't dance, we think they're not worshiping because we are the def we think we are the definition of worship. We know. And some of you say, I'm a worshiper. You say it with such pride as if you own the term. You don't. It is simply a cultural expression that you aim at God to say, I love you. And, and here's what Jesus says. He knew that it would be different. He knew that it would be not the same. That's why he says this. This is the key. True worship requires you being genuine. The worship, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the first thing, the main thing is that worship is genuine. Number two, worship is spiritual. They, that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So make sure you don't define worship just by your culture, your Baptist, your Catholic, your Pentecostal, or whatever you are especially those of us who've had a Pentecostal background, we really think we got a corner on the market. There's nobody else that does it right. All the Catholics are wrong. All the Baptists are wrong. They're dead, dead. You know, okay, you're wrong. This is <laughs> you're wrong in their mind sometimes because you're not them. And that's not what true worship is. Now, I want to close with three or four observations about worship that we learned. John chapter 4 is the story of Jesus at the woman at the well. And the statement that he makes is to this woman who he asked for water and they have this dialogue back and forth. And when they finish with the dialogue, he makes the statement. Those who worship me must worship me in spirit and truth because she was focused on it being a certain location. She was for, she was focused on the, the Samaritan view of worship. And Jesus says, first of all, you're not right, but let's be clear. It's not about who you are and where you come from. It's about the authenticity of your heart. And so when you understand that he wanted to redefine in her mind what worship was. And, and sometimes that's what has to happen. Because worship, if it's not defined properly, if it's owned by the Baptists and owned by the Pentecostals and owned by church people, and it's not allowed to be expansive, like right now, for example, streaming is a big way of worship. And a lot of people who are in church every week think, ah, that's, not, that's not church. Church is when you're in, in the house. And so... You know, they forget the Bible said wherever two or three are gathered together, I'm there in the midst, in your house, living room. It doesn't have to just be in the church building. I'm in a church building right now. I'm not against church. I'm simply saying that's not where worship is only. Because in this text, in John chapter 4, worship is located outside by a well. They're outside. Worship, in this case, was something that was designed to cross ethnic and gender boundaries. He's talking to a woman. That was shocking. And worship in this case became something that was infectious because he told her, she told other people, and before you know it, people were coming to God in John chapter 4. Read it for yourself. It's great stuff. But here's the point. Worship is not something that's just defined one way. It has to be broader. We have to be more broad-minded about it. The main thing, though, is it's genuine and from the heart. Let's pray. Father, I pray for those who are hearing this today. May they define worship broader than they have in the past and embrace the fact that worship is about what people are in heart and in spirit, not that they're like them in culture or in tradition. I pray in Jesus' name that we be true worshipers. My name is Ricky Temple. Thank you for being with me. I pray this sharpens you. I look forward to seeing you next time. We've got more to talk about. 
Get your definitions right. Change your life forever. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>